A cesarean delivery, also known as a C-section or cesarean section, is the surgical delivery of a baby. It involves one incision in the mother's abdomen and another in the uterus. Cesarean deliveries are generally avoided before 39 weeks of pregnancy so the child has proper time to develop in the womb. Sometimes, however, complications arise and a cesarean delivery must be performed prior to 39 weeks. A C-section may be medically necessary for the following reasons, labor is not progressing. Multiple gestations, such as twins or triplets, have occurred. The fetus experiences an emergency or severe health concern. The fetus has hydrocephalus, or excess fluid on the brain. The fetus is in the breech or transverse position. The baby is too large to travel through the cervix. The mother has a contagious virus, such as herpes or HIV, that a vaginal birth would transmit to the infant. The mother has complicating conditions, such as diabetes or high blood pressure. The mother has a uterine condition or a fibroid obstructing the cervix. The placental or umbilical cord has anomalies. The mother has previously given birth via C-section. A cesarean might also occur by maternal choice. A person might choose CDMR for a complex range of reasons, according to a 2017 study, such as, a fear of pain during childbirth or anxiety about vaginal delivery, previous experience interactions with healthcare professionals a range of social influences, including the media, friends, and family a feeling of control over the birthing process a cesarean is an intensive procedure that requires a longer healing process than a vaginal delivery. Only opt for a cesarean delivery on maternal request CDMR, once a doctor provides a clear picture of the risks. Insurers are likely to decline any claims for reimbursement on a CDMR as the procedure is not medically indicated, or they may only fund up to the cost of a normal delivery if the plan covers childbirth at all. Reasons for an emergency C-section If you need an emergency C-section, your doctor has decided that you or your baby are in dire stress and immediate delivery is the only option. Possible reasons for an emergency cesarean include, fetal or maternal distress prolapsed umbilical cord the umbilical cord drops through your cervix into your vagina ahead of your baby maternal hemorrhage placenta abruption the placenta peels away from the wall of your uterus uterine rupture your uterus tears along a previous c-section scar reasons for an unscheduled c-section there is a difference between an unscheduled c-section and an emergency c-section although people often use the terms interchangeably Unplanned cesareans are still considered urgent, but typically mother and baby aren't in life-threatening situations. Common causes for an urgent, unplanned c-section could include, labor isn't progressing. Contractions are too weak. Baby isn't tolerating labor. Baby is sideways or breech when labor begins. C-section procedure during an emergency c-section, time is of the essence. The goal is to get your baby out as fast as possible because your life or your baby's life could be in danger. The time from the beginning of surgery to delivery can be as short as one minute. If you had an epidural while you attempted vaginal delivery, your anesthesiologist may have time to give you enough medicine through your epidural so you'll be able to be awake during the C-section. If you didn't have an epidural, then your doctor may have to give you general anesthesia, meaning you won't be awake and you'll meet your baby when you wake up. Non-emergency C-sections, like one being performed because labor hasn't progressed normally, usually begin within 30 to 60 minutes of your doctor making the decision. You'll probably get to be awake for this C-section and meet your baby immediately. You'll get a spinal anesthetic, an epidural, or a combination of the two, called a combined spinal epidural anesthesia CSE, so you won't feel any pain. Risks like other types of major surgery, C-sections also carry risks. Risks to your baby include, breathing problems. Babies born by scheduled C-section are more likely to develop transient tachypnea, a breathing problem marked by abnormally fast breathing during the first few days after birth. Surgical injury. Although rare, accidental nicks to the baby's skin can occur during surgery. Risks to you include, infection. After a C-section, you might be at risk of developing an infection of the lining of the uterus endometritis. Postpartum hemorrhage. A C-section might cause heavy bleeding during and after delivery. Reactions to anesthesia. Adverse reactions to any type of anesthesia are possible. Blood clots. 
A C-section might increase your risk of developing a blood clot inside a deep vein, especially in the legs or pelvic organs, deep vein thrombosis. If a blood clot travels to your lungs and blocks blood flow, pulmonary embolism, the damage can be life-threatening. Wound infection. Depending on your risk factors and whether you needed an emergency C-section, you might be at increased risk of an incision infection. Surgical injury. Although rare, surgical injuries to the bladder or bowel can occur during a C-section. If there is a surgical injury during your C-section, additional surgery might be needed. Increased risks during future pregnancies. After a C-section, you face a higher risk of potentially serious complications in a subsequent pregnancy than you would after a vaginal delivery. The more C-sections you have, the higher your risks of placenta previa and a condition in which the placenta becomes abnormally attached to the wall of the uterus placenta accreta. The risk of your uterus tearing open along the scar line from a prior C-section uterine rupture is also higher if you attempt a vaginal birth after cesarean VBAC. How you prepare if your C-section is scheduled in advance, your healthcare provider might suggest talking with an anesthesiologist about any possible medical conditions that would increase your risk of anesthesia complications. Your healthcare provider might also recommend certain blood tests before your C-section. These tests will provide information about your blood type and your level of hemoglobin, the main component of red blood cells. These details will be helpful to your healthcare team in the unlikely event that you need a blood transfusion during the C-section. Even if you're planning a vaginal birth, it's important to prepare for the unexpected. Discuss the possibility of a C-section with your healthcare provider well before your due date. Ask questions, share your concerns and review the circumstances that might make a C-section the best option. In an emergency, your healthcare provider might not have time to explain the procedure or answer your questions in detail. After a C-section, you'll need time to rest and recover. Consider recruiting help ahead of time for the weeks after the birth of your baby. If you don't plan to deliver any more children, you might talk to your healthcare provider about long-acting reversible birth control or permanent birth control. What you can expect abdominal incisions used during C-sections uterine incisions used during C-sections before the procedure while the process can vary, depending on why the procedure is being done, most C-sections involve these steps, at home. Your healthcare provider might ask you to shower with an antiseptic soap the night before and the morning of your C-section. Don't shave your pubic hair within 24 hours of your C-section. This can increase the risk of a surgical site infection. If your pubic hair needs to be removed, it will be trimmed by the surgical staff just before surgery. At the hospital, your abdomen will be cleansed. A tube catheter will likely be placed into your bladder to collect urine. Intravenous IV lines will be placed in a vein in your hand or arm to provide fluid and medication. Anesthesia. Most C-sections are done under regional anesthesia, which numbs only the lower part of your body, allowing you to remain awake during the procedure. Common choices include a spinal block and an epidural block. In an emergency, general anesthesia is sometimes needed. With general anesthesia, you won't be able to see, feel or hear anything during the birth. During the procedure your doctor will use an abdominal incision and a uterine incision to deliver your baby. Abdominal incision. The doctor will make an incision through your abdominal wall. It's usually done horizontally near the pubic hairline. Alternatively, the doctor might make a vertical incision from just below the navel to just above the pubic bone. Your doctor will then make incisions, layer by layer, through your fatty tissue and connective tissue and separate the abdominal muscle to access your abdominal cavity. Uterine incision. The uterine incision is then made, usually horizontally across the lower part of the uterus, low transverse incision. Other types of uterine incisions might be used depending on the baby's position within your uterus and whether you have complications, such as placenta previa. Delivery. The baby will be delivered through the incisions. The doctor will clear your baby's mouth and nose of fluids, then clamp and cut the umbilical cord. The placenta will be removed from your uterus, and the incisions will be closed with sutures. If you have regional anesthesia, you'll be able to hear and see the baby right after delivery. After the procedure after a C-section, you'll probably stay in the hospital for a few days. 
Your healthcare provider will discuss pain relief options with you. Once the effects of your anesthesia begin to fade, you'll be encouraged to drink plenty of fluids and walk. This helps prevent constipation and deep vein thrombosis. Your healthcare team will monitor your incision for signs of infection. If you had a bladder catheter, it will likely be removed as soon as possible. You will be able to start breastfeeding as soon as you feel up to it. Ask your nurse or a lactation consultant to teach you how to position yourself and support your baby so that you're comfortable. Your healthcare team will select medications for your post-surgical pain with breastfeeding in mind. Before you leave the hospital, talk with your healthcare provider about any preventive care you might need. Making sure your vaccinations are current can help protect your health and your baby's health. When you go home during the C-section recovery process, discomfort and fatigue are common. To promote healing, take it easy. Rest when possible. Try to keep everything that you and your baby might need within reach. For the first few weeks, avoid lifting anything heavier than your baby. Also, avoid lifting from a squatting position. Seek pain relief. To soothe incision soreness, your healthcare provider might recommend a heating pad, ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, others, acetaminophen, Tylenol, others, or other medications to relieve pain. Most pain relief medications are safe for women who are breastfeeding. Avoid sex. To prevent infection, avoid sex for six weeks after your C-section. You might also consider not driving until you are able to comfortably apply brakes and twist to check blind spots without the help of pain medication. This might take one to two weeks. Check your C-section incision for signs of infection. Pay attention to any signs or symptoms you experience. Contact your healthcare provider if your incision is red, swollen or leaking discharge, you have a fever, you have heavy bleeding, you have worsening pain. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and please click on the bell so you'll be updated on my next video. Thank you. We care for UPH. Your health comes first.